I'm Oliver Slope with Blue Line Futures coming to you from the Chicago Board of Trade with another episode of Tech Talk. It is Wednesday, May 12th. It was the USDA day. It was out just uh, an hour or two ago. It put a little bit of pressure on markets. It wasn't enough uh, bullish data to feed the bull, so to speak. So, so we saw some profit taking and some long liquidation, as well as probably some new sellers entering the market trying to find a top. Now, are we at a top? Well, as we always say, the tops and bottoms are a process, not necessarily a point. So we wouldn't be so quick to jump the gun on that, especially on these old crop grains. For instance, we've got the July corn contract pulled up here. It had a down day, obviously, but look at this. This is basically just consolidation after the incredible run uh, that we've had since breaking out here at the beginning of April. The market's catching its breath, and that is healthy. Now, we wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit more of a pullback, uh, but I think you're probably going to see more of that in the new crop contract. So I want you to take a look at this old crop contract, still very constructive, but move over to new crop December futures, and we're over 50 cents off the highs, which is a little bit more of a caution flag. Now, we know that we didn't get any acre adjustment in this month's report, but that's probably going to come next month. And so I think you've got a lot of traders kind of front running the anticipation that we're going to see more corn acres in that report. And you're seeing some long liquidation. Now, this is going to be a significant pocket for us going forward. This comes in the mid 570s to 580. This is kind of the secondary breakout point here uh, from just a couple weeks ago. If we break and close below there, we wouldn't be surprised to see that trigger some additional selling pressure here in the near term. So in short, Old crop still looks really constructive, still a pretty sound fundamental backdrop. New crop, a little bit more of a, a caution flag here in the very near term, especially if we start breaking down below this mid-570 level. Now, the other grain market that we want to take a close look at is the Chicago wheat. Chicago wheat has been doing pretty good, but it really hasn't been you know, holding its own. It's been catching a, a tailwind, so to speak, from corn and soybeans, grinding higher and chopping around in wide ranges as of late. And the same type of deal. We're down here towards the bottom end of the range. This 710 to 720 area is going to be a must-hold area. If we break and close below that, we wouldn't be surprised to see additional pressure come in and take us back down to this breakout point, which is previous resistance going back to January, February, and this breakout point from April. That comes in closer to that 675 area. So so long as the bulls um, can defend this, they remain in control. But a break and close below that certainly neutralizes that bullishness and puts the bears back in the driver's seat. And we'd look for a retracement to this breakout point. So we're, we're a little bit bearish on the wheat market, especially if corn continues to peel off. We think that that's probably going to lead to some risk off trades in the grain sector. And we think that that could uh, put pressure on wheat in the very near term. Now, wrapping things up with the livestock markets, we've got June live cattle here. We've had a heck of a nice uh, recovery rally here recently, which is long overdue after this long, drawn-out grind lower that we saw there uh, from the beginning of April here to just a couple weeks ago, the beginning of May. We got this recovery rally basically back to the breakdown point from April 21st, which is our pivot pocket and our resistance point. We need to see consecutive closes out above here to keep the momentum going upward. We wouldn't be surprised to see the market take a little bit of a pause here uh, and, and maybe trade sideways as we wait for confirmation of either a breakout above this pocket or a failure. If we fail here, we wouldn't be surprised to see the market come back and retest the lows. The cash market has been very lackluster as of late, but hopefully we can get that to, to turn going forward. We do think that there's still a lot of um, opportunity in those deferred contracts. June will be running against the shot clock a little bit more, so we think the upside probably a little bit more capped in that market. So that's what we're looking at. That's what you should be looking at, too. This has been Oliver Slope with Blue Line Futures from the Chicago Board of Trade. Remember, trading futures and options involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Thanks a lot.